Got a bottle of Patron and some light sauce. Two red devil looking eyeballs. And I finna turn up when the night falls. If you hear a siren, then it's my fault. Jump in my whip, baby, let's ride. We ain't gonna stop at a red light. And I'ma take shots like a tag nine. <laughs> it's gonna get live. Here we go, it's about to go down. Let me know, I'ma buy another round. Get low, drop it down to the ground. Oh yeah, wow, shorty make it bounce. Mama see the foot cuffs on my cardiac. Took my breath away like a heart attack. And I'ma spend every time in my money back. Everybody wanna know. <laughs> How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and I do hope you guys enjoyed that quick little teaser video of the system that we just built. Now currently this is around a $1,700 or 35,000 Rand system which we're gonna go over, we're gonna benchmark, we're gonna test uh, everything, the temperatures and so on and see how it performs. But I'm quickly gonna go over all of the parts that I used, why I used them and I'll of course also give you guys a bit of a, a closer uh, look at uh, the system itself. But firstly, all of the parts was provided by ASUS South Africa, so a big shout out to them for making this video possible and also this build. And of course, this build is also going to go back to them. Just need to mention that. <laughs> now, all of the parts will be linked in the video description if you want to buy it for yourself uh, and then also some other recommendations as well. But just before you start with the video, if you guys want to get a system like this uh, for yourself but don't necessarily have the knowledge to build a system yourself, ASUS does sell uh, pre-built systems similar to this. Even in the same case, a lot of the parts are exactly the same uh, but some of them have i5s and, and so on. So if you want to get one of those and possibly even save a bit of cash because it is a pre-built uh, then you can also check out the link in the video description for that as well. So then for our first component we have our motherboard which is the ASUS Tub Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4 which is a DDR4 a motherboard instead of DDR5. Now with that you do save a bit of cash and also a headache of actually finding DDR5 because that's also a problem on its own but in general I still think DDR4 is a better option for majority of people. The speeds are still good enough for, for everything that you really need, especially for gaming. But anyway, this is more of a mid-range board. You can even go for B660 boards instead. I did a preview to do a build with a B660 Strix board. Pretty much the same price, but you do have your options there. Now, this board is currently retailing for around $270 or 5,000 Rand for here in South Africa. Now, like I mentioned again, this is a DDR4 board and does support up to 128 gigs of memory 
running at 5,333 megahertz. So plenty of speeds <laughs> still, you don't have to go DDR5 uh, yet. Now, next up for our PCI Express slots, you do have uh, five of them with uh, the top one being a PCI Express uh, 5, the new connection for incredible speeds and everything that nothing really uses still, but later on possibly it will. Now, also the rest of the PCI Express slots are PCI Express 3.0 being a 1X or 4X. As for storage, you do have uh, plenty of options here along for your SATA connections, you do have for a PCI Express, a four M.2 SSDs. So plenty of super fast speeds that we're going to definitely utilize for our SSD. Now, if you wanted to overclock, which you will be able to do with the exact same system because we do have an overclockable CPU, you do have a proper 14 plus R1 VRM setup, which is definitely good enough for any normal amount of overclocking. And also I'm happy to see that there's a decent set of IO. So that's it for our motherboard. And next up, we have our CPU, which is the Intel i7-12700K. Now, honestly, this is a beast of a CPU. I've currently have one in my personal system. And then also I have built a couple of systems actually with the 12700K. And it just, it's a mind blowingly fast CPU. So you won't go wrong if you want to pair your system up with one of these. Now, currently they are somewhat expensive. They are reaching for around $380 or 8,500 Rand with the prices jumping around every time I actually look at it. Now, if you want to save a bit of a cash, you can actually go for the KF version, which is going to be cheaper. And then also you do have the option of the non-overclockable uh, 12700, which is even uh, cheaper. And that you can even pair up with, let's say, a B660 board or a H670 board. So you do have uh, plenty of options there. Now, what makes a CPU so incredibly good is that it does have eight performance cores and four efficient cores, which in total gives you actually 20 uh, threads. And you can overclock this a B up to five gigahertz and even over that, but a reasonably five gigahertz. So uh, it's you're not gonna have any problems and we'll get into the benchmarks and you'll see this is just, again, a super fast CPU. Now I did also do my review on that if you want to see that and just for editing and for gaming and everything, editing, gaming and streaming at the same time, you'll be able to do that with the CPU. But if you even want to save a bit more cash, you can go for the i5, the 12600K or the non-K instead even, and you'll save there also you don't have to go necessarily for the i7 if your system is only used for gaming i5 is still plenty plenty powerful and then the next up for our memory we have the kingston fury renegade <laughs> memory so these are a pack of 216 gigs so a total of 32 gigs running at 3200 megahertz and again it is a ddr4 now you can go faster again the board goes up to 5333 megahertz but still this is a plenty fast enough but you do have the option of going a bit faster as well i'll still say the sweet spot is around 3600 but you do save a bit of cash. So this is a two pack again, which is retailing for around $170 or 3000 Rand. And you do get this a nice rugged dark aluminum look, no RGB, but I think it fits actually with our system being a bit more dark with all of the white glow in the system. I actually quite like it. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily like RGB anymore. So the Fury Renegade is going to be a good option for you. Now, next up for our SSD, which I currently don't have a box of to show you guys, but it's in there, you, you can believe me. <laughs> uh, but it is the Kingston Fury Renegade as well. So it is a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 SSD, which I actually already did a review on. So if you want to see how it performs, it's pretty damn quick. You also check out the link in the video description for that, because it does reach speeds up to 7,000 megabytes a second in reads and writes. Now, also for Pricing, it is retailing for around $140 or 3,300 Rand. For the one terabyte version, you can go higher or if, if you want to, you can go lower as well to save a bit of cash. But now again, if you want to see how this one performs against some other SSD, check out the review. Again, linked in video description. And then moving on towards our case, we have the ASUS Tough Gaming GT301, 
you can see all the goodness right here already built. Uh, so this is an eighty a dollar or two thousand rand a case. It's a mid tower, it's nothing too too fancy, but it definitely gets the job done with everything you need. You got some RGB fans at the front. You have a separate one fan here at the back. It covers your power supply with the power supply shroud, and it's just a pretty nice system to build in. No issues uh, I really had of building inside the system, and you get some a bit of a different look in the front as well with the cross handles there that you're not going to pick up your system on. Don't do that because it's definitely going to pull off, pull off the front panel there. But one of the other cases that we're going to use next does have actually have handles at the top. So stay tuned for that. But now if you want to go for something a bit larger or a different case, Asus does have plenty of options to choose from. So you will be able to have your needs met. This is just a Nice little, more affordable case that I actually think does look pretty cool. And then next up for our power supply, we have the Asus Tough Gaming 750 watt non-modular 80 plus bronze power supply. The non-modular part isn't in the name, but I just mentioned that because it is a non-modular power supply, so all of the cables are fixed. But you do save a cash there because this one does cost around $80 or 1,700 Rand. Again, for an 80 plus bronze rated 700 50 watts which is a plenty you'd have a six year warranty as well and it does have a silent mode but this is definitely a good option if you need to power a pretty power hungry cpu like the 12700k and also a gpu which currently the one we have here isn't that power hungry but you do have the option of upgrading then later on and not worrying have to worry about actually getting a new power supply then next up for our cooler we have the asus uh, tough again asus gaming lc to 40. So just like the name implies, this is a 240 millimeter AIO where you do have included two RGB fans and also the tough RGB logo there on the pump as well. Now, if you want to go for something a bit smaller, you do have the option of getting a 120 millimeter version, which is going to be a bit cheaper, but it's definitely not going to cool as well. Now, pricing wise, it does retail for around $120 or 1,600 Rand, which definitely isn't a bad and it does look pretty cool. And of course, we'll get into how it performs just a bit later, how it actually cools our CPU. And then finally for our GPU, we have the ASUS Tough RTX 3060 OC version 2. So I am happy to see that prices have been dropping quite steadily for these uh, GPUs. And even while writing the script previously, it actually came down in price when I was checking today. So currently it is retailing for around $450 or 10,000 Rand. Unfortunately, it's still above the MSRP of $330, but again, it is steadily getting down there. But anyway, I have done a couple of reviews on RTX 3060 GPUs before just not on this one so we'll see how this one performs but uh, it definitely performs really well it's a good option if you want to go for a high refresh rate 1080p gaming or even 1440p gaming which we'll see also we're going to test it in both of those uh, and thanks to DLSS you can even play up to 4k without really issues in some games not all of them but in, in some of them now I do like the look of these tough cards they're, they're a bit more minimalistic but I do like the more a gray black color scheme with them they are triple fans uh, and also they do have a plenty of io with some rgb as well nothing too hectic but here on the side uh, and then also at the bottom around here you do have, have included a back plate as well to help cool your system and does a somewhat uh, does a job there and does also have a, a dual bias for your performance mode and your quiet mode currently it is on our performance mode so uh, we're gonna see actually how it performs so starting off with the first uh, benchmark we have a cinebench r23 and here i can see that the 12700k uh, does beat out uh, the ryzen 9 5900x but but loses to the i9 12900 non-k then for the Blender Classroom benchmark, we can see that it's really close here between the top three with the 12700K just being about four seconds slower than the Ryzen 9 5900X and a couple more seconds compared to the i9-12900. Then for the Geekbench 5 benchmark, even though it does lose again to the i9-12900K, it easily beats out the i9-11900K uh, quite a, a bit in both single core and multi-core. 
Then getting into our gaming benchmarks, we tested the system in a 1080p with all of the games set on ultra preset. And here we can see in Rainbow Six Siege, along with the DLSS, it just destroys frames, going up to 335 frames a second. Whereas Borderlands 3 does drop down to below 100, but is still a decently high enough. And again, everything on ultra preset. And then lastly, for our 1440p benchmarks, here we can see that even though Rainbow Six Siege does drop somewhat lower, it's still way above 200 frames there. Borderlands, however, does a drop below 60 frames a second, but again, you can lower everything to get a better result. But all of the other games are doing really well. Apex, Call of Duty, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, everything is very much playable. And even though I didn't do 4K benchmarks, it'll even be able to do that reasonably well in some of these games, especially if you do have DLSS. So that's pretty much it for our build video of our $1,700 or $35,000 Rand 12700K or 3060 system. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment like always. Again, a big shout out to a suit of Africa for sending over all of the parts. And if you guys want to get any of the parts for yourself, again, the links will be in the description below uh, where you can all the buy links and all of uh, that do that and everything. But if you guys have any recommendation for a different build you want me to do, maybe later on comparison or whatever you have an idea with, let me know down in the comments below. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll check all of you next time. Cheers guys.